Studio flash photography is not a black art, it's a, a kind of a science and when you get going perhaps it can feel a little bit complicated um, and what I've tried to do in this video really is to kind of unravel the kind of the secrets to get you up and going with studio flash photography straight away. Uh, the main question I get asked probably at trade shows and else is what do I buy? Um, as far as the kind of Elinchrom flash is concerned, the D-Lite range is perfect for kind of the introduction into studio flash. So we've got the D-Lite 1, which is obviously the kind of the lowest power that they do. Then they have the D-Lite 2 and the D-Lite 4, uh, each increasing themselves by, uh, by one stop. But it's just down to how much flash you're going to need. That's the question you should be asking yourself before you're buying anything to do with studio flash. So as far as what you buy is concerned, I would definitely make sure you're buying two heads because that's pretty much where all the magic starts to happen. Once I've unpacked the kit, I'm ready to shoot straight away. All I need to do now is get that perfect exposure and a meter uh, to gain that creative aperture, uh, which means that I'm trying to control what I shoot at. So if I want f4, all I need to do is basically up and down the power of the flash head to gain that working aperture. I can do that in two ways, either from the back of the flash head itself or using the built-in technology of the Elinchrom Skyport, which is in the head, but it's also the hot shoe mounted trigger to increase or decrease the power of the light by tenths of a stop. Hence ending up with that perfect exposure every single time. It's important to remember that one light should just do one job. Specifically, when you think about the key light's job is to light the subject, that's the main light. Uh, whereas a secondary light is often used to uh, separate them away from the background. It could be a hair light or, or as a background light. Um, make sure that each of those lights is just doing its job and not kind of crossing each other because that can cause a contamination of light and it kind of takes away often the power, the real kind of simplicity of the portrait. Another choice to make when you're buying into your studio flash is are you going to go for soft boxes or are you going to go for umbrellas? Well, basically at some stage, I hope you're going to open them both, all right? But for now, a soft box is a more controllable light source. That's what I would opt for. However, if I was doing more group photography, threes and fours, I would probably opt for a, a more of an umbrella style of lighting than I would the soft box because, of course, the umbrella allows the light to spread and vignette out whereas the softbox controls the light into a small light source and doesn't really allow it to spread much. The main light, often referred to as the key light, is the most important light in our setup. Uh, why? Um, because it's going to give us a three-dimensional subject. It doesn't matter if I'm photographing a child, a baby, a family, or a plate of food. Um, it's there to actually give us depth and texture. And depending on where we position it in the studio or in a living room, um, it's going to actually throw the shadow. And shadow creates texture, and the texture creates the roundness. And that's what we're trying to achieve with the key light. So no matter where we put it, it's either going to give us a creative image if it's more behind the subject or it's going to give us a more flattering kind of well-lit subject if it's in front of them. To make sure we're getting creative with our flash photography we want to make sure that we're moving our key light around the subject. Just remember to keep the distance from flash to subject the same otherwise you're going to need to re-meter of course as well as if we change the accessory on the front of the flash. We use a second light source to help separate the subject away from its background. We can do that to either act, let's say, as a hair light or an accent down a shoulder to help that separation, or we can be pointing the light at the background, changing its luminosity, the, the power setting, to either make the background very, very light or obviously just bring some illumination to the scene. When you're using the second flash as a hair light for separation, it's good to remember that, as a rule, um, somebody with dark hair, you're going to be needing uh, about a stop less than the working aperture. Uh, but with somebody with very light or blonde hair, you're going to need two stops less than the working aperture. Otherwise, you're going to find that the hair is going to burn out. Eventually, you're going to want to take your photography to a whole new creative level. And that's where the accessory range with Elinchrom really comes into its own. Uh, things like snoots, honeycombs, uh, all control the light, same as barn doors. But we can also add a different layer of softness to the light as well with the likes of big soft boxes with two layers of diffusion and so on. Accessories will really change and mold the light to a different kind of quality than the basic soft box or the basic umbrella will actually give to you. So when you're looking to add that little bit of spice into your portrait next, think about adding something else into the mix. 
Think about the accessories that are going to future-proof you, because remember, with all the Elencrom range, everything kind of fits on itself. So in other words, whether I'm you using the pro range of Studio Flash or the entry-level Studio Flash, all the accessories will fit on the front, helping me to completely modify the way that I use the light. So as far as a photographer's concerned, Elencrom allows me to get as creative as I want or as basic as I want. And that's one of the reasons I always choose Elencrom.